Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. Today, we are here to compare Verizon, ticker symbol VZ, to AT&T, ticker symbol T. This was a question that was asked in the comments. Could you do a video comparing the two? What you like, what you don't like, what to be aware of? I'm like, okay, sure. Because as y'all, you know, like I said, I do be in the comments. I do be reading. So when you comment and it's good, I take it. We make videos out of it and we have conversations like this. This is what I'm here for. All right. So like, subscribe, comment, ask a question, and you might get a video. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I already talked about the, the ticker symbols. You got Verizon, you got AT&T. For the most part, I think most of us understand what they do and how they make money. But there are some things that are a little bit different and some red flags, maybe yellow flags, that at least give me cause for pause cause for pause for both of these. Currently, neither of these are in my portfolio. I'll tell you why at some point in this video. All right, so the first thing I notice is how the companies are organized. Verizon is pretty much what you what you think it is. Internet, cell phone, that's pretty much what they do. They do it for businesses, they do it for individuals. That's, that's really it. There is no silver bullet or magic business that they're in that is surprising or intriguing or even innovative. That's fine. I like good, consistent money. There's just nothing wrong with that. And Verizon is definitely receiving good, consistent money. They're not going anywhere. We need internet. We got 5G. You need cell phone service. They're, they're fine. They are totally fine. They pay a solid dividend, which we'll get into as well. AT&T has attempted to do something a bit different and really become I guess a conglomerate, especially in the, the telecommunications space. They own several different businesses and different streams of income outside of cell phone and internet. So you know they got that, right? The, you know, you got Lily, the uh, the commercial TV character that pretty much tells you that everybody gets their best deals all the time. New and existing customers, right? Um, aside from that though, they own DirecTV, they own HBO, they really, I mean, when I say on HBO, I really mean they, they own uh, the whole Warner television network. So I, I, that not mistaken, that also includes a lot of the DC movies. The Batman is a really good movie. I could go on all day about that. I'm not going to watch the movie we'll talk about later. Um, but aside from that, they own Warner Media, which also includes HBO, which also includes HBO Max, which is interesting, right? Because... From everything I need to stream a movie on HBO Max, the Batman's not on there, at least to my knowledge, um, not yet. Uh, but the the entire process from creating the movie to getting it to your television and your phone can go through AT&T, which I think is really cool and interesting because they, they own Wi-Fi, right? They have a, a place where you can get Wi-Fi. If you can watch on your phone, you're going to need AT&T service if you want to do that. Um, if the streaming app itself, right, um, they got that. And then, or you can go to the movies. It's like they, they, get, they can get paid, what, three or four different ways from you just wanting to watch a, your own movie. You're paying for Wi-Fi service. You're paying for cell phone service. You're paying for the subscription for the app. That's three ways that the same company can get paid just for you trying to watch whatever it is you want to watch on an HBO Max or even... Right, that's not the only channel that they own, um, but any of the the Warner uh, TV networks or Direct TV, which they also own. So in either case, they can get paid several ways from you trying to do one or two different things, which I think is really cool. But it doesn't always mean that it's profitable. So here, here are the financials, some of the financials for AT and T. You'll notice that, you know, they were profitable. They were profitable. All of a sudden, you see that the number that's in parentheses there, that's actually a negative. They actually lost money, which to me is concerning for a company that's been around for quite a while. The reason why they lost money, though, is because the acquisitions of DirecTV as well as Time Warner were relatively recent. And that when you absorb and buy a business or acquire a business, that costs money. And, and when you do that, it also comes with additional expenses that at and probably wasn't ready for, but that happens all over the place, right? If you acquire a home, like I did, or a car, like I did uh, last year, 
it's gonna cost money, right? This gas, new tires I had to get, new battery I had to get, these things come with buying a new business or acquiring a business and absorbing it into your own, especially something that might not be as profitable. AT&T for a while is, has been struggling with this. I've actually done a few videos on how expensive those deals were, how they had to you know, finagle and move some things around because it was you know, pretty, huge deal that they had to deal with and not making enough money to offset some of those costs cost uh making game of thrones is expensive making a superhero movie is expensive at&t got to figure that out and they have to figure out how to do it in a hurry because you know you can't be losing this much money on a regular basis we'll see if they can figure it out Verizon, on the other hand, has very consistent profits. Uh, I'm not here to tell you it's the, the best of the words. Everything should be in context. But it's better than AT&T right now. If I'm looking at it, at it financially, I got to side with Verizon so far based on just the revenue numbers alone. I don't know what the expectation is for AT&T in 2022, 2023, and beyond. But I don't like what I see right now. But here's the other thing that I don't like. Right now, if I were to look at the last six months for Verizon, it's only up 2%, like 1.9% if I remember correctly, and then up 4% over the last year. Neither one of those are impressive. It, it's just not. That's that's not going to knock my socks off, socks off. It's not going to make me raise an eyebrow. Now, just like I said yesterday, that since December, which is not a, a full six months, but since since December, Verizon looks really good. AT&T doesn't look good in any case. They're down close to 10% in the last six months, 9.7% um, last six months, and then down about 10% over the last year. That's not going to cut it. Remember last year from January to December 2021, the stock market was up, what was it, 27% or so? Well over 20? at and didn't touch that. Didn't touch it at all. Uh, I, I just I just don't feel great about where at and is headed at this point in time. You got some people, I say, well, look, you know, buy low, sell high, I'm going to hold for the long term, get that dividend. And you could do that. You certainly could, but last I checked, AT&T has been, I can't remember the last time AT&T had a, a positive year. I, I really don't. It could have been because of the acquisitions. It could be just, they're just not really inspiring people to invest. Neither one of these companies really are because, especially for Verizon, they don't really grow as much. They're really known as a stable dividend company. And speaking of dividends, uh, Verizon pays, at, as of this point, $2.54 per share whereas AT&T pays $2.08. Now, for those that don't know, if you if you have a full share, you're holding it for a year, you're probably gonna get that $2.54. You got a half share, you're gonna get half that. You got 0.25 shares, you're gonna get 0.25 of the $2.54 spread out over each quarter, just so you know. You're not gonna get one check for $2.54. Um, that's But that's how dividends work. So both pay a dividend. Verizon is slightly better. Um, in terms of like how much you're getting from that dividend it's just both are weird both are weird i i put verizon on my my watch list that's the one i'm most uh interested in but neither one of these are are enticing enough for me to invest two percent doesn't doesn't excite me man i i can get two percent in a day right it, with the right stock on the right day um yeah right four percent you can you can do that in a day, right? De depending on what what you invest in and what day you did it, four percent doesn't excite me. That's that's not enough for me. It does pay a solid dividend. It's probably going to be a solid company for 2022 because again, at no point, regardless of what's going on with interest rates, regardless of what's going on overseas, internet and phone ain't going nowhere. That that is a fact. They are not going anywhere, and we have enough data to say Verizon's gonna get you that that dividend. So if you're into dividends, you're not worried about the growth of the stock actually both of these will fit but definitely verizon for me if that's what i was looking for but personally i mean if it's if it's lows i, I know i bring up lows all the time but you know if it's if it's lows if it's amt which is a reit if it's almost any reit i'm looking at all of those before i look at a verizon if i'm looking for better solid growth but also a decent uh a decent dividend i think those provide you a little bit more so I'm not ready to go in on uh, Verizon. at and is just a no, a flat out no for me until they fix those numbers. Uh, until you can give me something positive, then I'll then I'll give you uh, time of day. I'm not giving at and a time of day at all right now. Um, I haven't done so in, in a while. Y'all don't hear me talk about at and for a reason. 
you see why. Um, so those are just my very quick high level thoughts. Um, if, if you gotta choose between two, I'm definitely leaning Verizon for obvious reasons. Uh, AT&T, I'm interested in, I, I, I want them to do better because on paper, being able to get paid that many times from the same one person is really cool. At least on paper, if assuming those fees aren't high, um, it would be really cool. But it just hadn't paid off for them yet. We'll see. We can keep monitoring. We can see if they, you know, start to turn things around, and definitely keep an eye on their quarterly reports and their annual reports to see where they're moving. Um, but keep your eye on it. Both are interesting. Put Verizon on your watch list, especially if you're, especially if you're interested in dividends. Uh, I don't know what you want to do with AT and T, but is there all right so let me know what you think in the comments about these two do you own any of them um does any of this entice you and it, are there any other companies that you feel that we should review do a comparison and get my thoughts um last before we go before we go do make sure you hit the like subscribe button do do that if you're into superhero movies which i'm not going to make a superhero channel i'm not doing that but that movie was really good if there was any other topic that i could rant about other than the market it would be superhero movies. Um, the Batman was good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. That's it for me. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.